In this Revit tutorial, I want to cover the basics of how you put in a floor. Right now I have walls, windows, and doors, but there's currently no floor in my entire building. We're going to find the floor tool on the architecture tab in the build panel. It'll be right here. And as with walls, we have a variety of different flooring options. And right now what I'm going to do is pick the floor architectural. Once I pick the floor, uh, first I can see that we have a variety of different floor types that I can choose from. I'm just putting in a generic 12 inch floor right now, um, but if we click on the type selector you see that there are different options including um, wood joists with an actual finish on the top if that's something you'd like to do, but right now I'm just going with a generic floor. I've also gotten a like teal or aqua um, contextual tab. It's slightly different than the green when we get into modifying. Uh, things like uh, walls, moving them around, that type of thing. It's a slightly different color. And that's because what I'm working with is a sketch-based element. Things like floors and ceilings and profile modifications and things like that are all sketch-based elements. And they work a little bit differently. You'll notice right here that we have a red X and a green check mark. Those are really important. We cannot move forward in the program until we have resolved what we're doing here. So I can go in and draw whatever shape floor I want. I can come down here and I can offset it and do things like that. But until I either hit the green X, which means I would like to cancel it, I don't like what I've done, I want to basically escape or I need to hit the green check mark and say that I'm, I'm happy with the shape I've made, I want to keep it. Um, if I don't do those, I cannot move on. You'll notice that you can actually click on different tabs, and in a way it acts like you can get away from it, but basically all of the information is grayed out. That's because we have to resolve what we're doing here. So, if I actually want to put a floor in on the most basic level, I can work with a shape or I can pick walls. With a room that's this simple, I could certainly grab the rectangle tool and then come in and just snap from one corner to the next. Now, I could actually go to the exterior walls, or exterior of the walls, rather, if I was going to be putting this on a slab or something like that. But because I would maybe want to have a foundation under my building or something like that, I might not really want the floor to go wall to wall, um, so I might keep it on the interior. Since I made a large rectangle here, uh, it created a closed shape, and that's what's really important about a floor. You must have a closed shape. No matter what that shape is, it has to be completely finished. It's giving me these uh, little unlocked symbols right here. If I wanted to, I could lock this floor with the edge of this line here, this wall, so that if I change the shape of the building, the floor would go with it and normally that would be a really good idea. I'm not worried about that right now but constraining this so it flexed with the walls and the shape of the building normally would be a very good idea. If I'm happy with the shape that I have what I can do is hit the green check mark to accept it and now I have a floor. It's blue only because it's active. I don't actually have a blue floor. If I click away from it you'll see that it goes back to white and the floor is still there, it's just that you can't really see it. If I go to my project browser and scroll down and maybe go to a 3D view and orbit around by holding down shift and put, pushing down the wheel, you can see that now I have a floor. And it's, it's kind of inset inside of those exterior walls, uh, which makes sense because if I wanted to have uh, this thing on a foundation or something like that, the floor would still be inside of that. That was putting in a floor using a rectangular shape. Let's say I wanted to maybe delete that and just try a different way so you can see how that works. You'll notice that when you're in this particular view, it can be a little bit tricky to catch the floor. One way to do it is to hover over where you know the floor edge is. You know, I know it's on this interior face of this wall. If I tap the tab key, it will eventually get to the floor and then I can select it. 
Now at this point, since the floor is selected, I could either go into edit the boundary, or if I just wanted to get rid of it entirely, I could just hit the delete key and now the floor is gone. If I wanted to put in a new floor, which is what I intended to do, I can click on floor again and it will bring me back to that same contextual menu. This time, instead of maybe just drawing it with a shape or lines, which definitely worked out really well, I could do pick walls. Pick walls works really nicely when you have a more you know, interesting shape than a rectangle. So I could come in and I can hover over the walls and I can either get the um, interior, the middle, or the exterior. So I'm just going to probably hover over the inside. So I'm going to get basically the same looking floor that I had before, just a different way to do it. Once again, if you had a more unique building shape, then uh, this would be a little bit more interesting. Once I get that closed rectangle going around the outside, I didn't offset it or anything, so it should be going tight edge to edge. I'll hit the green check mark, and now I have um, my nice floor. And if I click outside of it, once again, I can go and maybe see that in a 3D view, and there's my floor. That looks pretty good. Now if I go back to my, my floor plan level one, maybe I want to edit that floor or do something with it. I can certainly hover and hit the tab key to find it, just like that. There's my floor, generic 12 inch. Um, but sometimes that can be really tricky if you have a more complicated model. I'd like to remind you of the filter option. What I could do is do a crossing selection from right to left, so I'm selecting multiple things. And then I could go into filter, and I could say check none, and how about I just keep that floor? And that would be another way to activate that floor and get it selected. Once you've done that and you want to make a change to the floor, you just come up to the now green modify floors and hit edit boundary. Once you say that, your floor turns back into those magenta lines. So we could go in and change the shape or, you know, do whatever we like. If I wanted to, for example, create an opening for a staircase or something like that, I would actually do that in this mode. If I wanted to create an opening, maybe I'll just grab a rectangle and draw it in this area. So I'm going to have a hole in the floor. I could do something like that. In Revit, basically anytime you have a closed shape within another closed shape just like this, you're going to be creating a hole. Um, in other scenarios, it might be that you're creating just a different wall surface, for example. But with a sketch-based element like this, with floors and ceilings, a closed shape within another one will create a hole. So this might be, you know, an opening in the floor that I could put a railing around or something like that that's going into the basement. If I'm basically happy with that shape, I can just hit the green check mark. And you'll see now that there's an actual, you know, rectangular uh, opening here. And if I go to my 3D view and take a look at that, you'll see that now I actually have a hole in my floor so I could have some stairs going uh, down to the basement level, for example. So the important thing to remember here is that whenever you're creating something with a sketch base element like this, you need to go into the edit boundary mode to make a change and whether you're initially just creating it or making a change to it, you need to either say yes I'd like to keep it with this green check mark or no I'd like to cancel it and hit this red X. If you don't do that uh, you won't be able to move on.